Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Welcome back to this YouTube channel that takes on a whole range of issues related to narcissistic personalities and narcissistic relationships. Um, many of you have probably heard of a very famous researcher in marriage circles, a guy named John Gottman, incredibly impressive scientist, scholar, has applied his work to doing couples therapy. And it really, it's a, it's a very sort of um, humbling body of work he's created. One of the big theories that came out of her, one of the big sort of takeaways from Gottman's work is this idea of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So if you're wondering how the four horsemen of the apocalypse and what they have to do with your relationship, keep watching because there's some real implications for people who are in narcissistic marriage. So let's take this on. This idea of Gottman's four horsemen of the apocalypse very dramatic name, and then narcissistic relationship because it does raise some issues that are specific in narcissistic marriages. Like I said, Dr. John Gottman is a renowned marital researcher who has studied thousands, probably tens of thousands of people who are married and encoded these videos painstakingly to come to some major conclusions about what works in marriages. He trains thousands of therapists in his model of marital therapy. Maybe many of you have seen what's called a Gottman therapist. His data-driven approach to couples therapy is really, really steeped in science. And he has numerous adherents around the world, both therapists and, cli and clients. Gottman's research was done over many decades. And like I said, it's a really impressive body of work that has culminated in clini clinical applications that work for many, many people. Now, one of the big pieces to come out of, or big takeaways that's come out of Gottman's work is it, he tries to understand sort of what predicts whether a marriage succeeds or, or, do, or doesn't stay together. And he brought out this idea, the concept of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And no, not the original four. So there's a trivia question. Any of you know what the four original horsemen of the apocalypse are? They are conquest, war, hunger, and death. Those are not what we're going to be talking about here. In Gottman's work, the four horsemen are factors that he identified by research that would predict the end of a relationship. And that if these patterns are not addressed, then the relationship on the basis of his data is not likely to last and is a very strongly predicted that this, such a marriage would end in divorce. So where it gets really interesting to me as somebody who's interested in narcissistic relationships is that all four of Gottman's horsemen, as they were, are actually perfect descriptors of what happens in all narcissistic relationships. So bear with me, because here is the reasoning. If Gottman's research holds that relationships characterized by these four patterns don't last, and just about every narcissistic relationship is characterized by these four patterns, then perhaps no narcissistic relationship can last. So let's take a look at what these four horsemen are so you could apply them to your relationships and, and, and think about what this really means. So let's start by talking about the four horsemen. The four horsemen are criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. In fact, these factors pretty much describe narcissistic communication styles with everyone. So let's start with criticism. Criticism is just what it sounds like. Criticism. Now remember, Gottman's work is focused on marriage and intimate relationships. And I think his work is very much focused on marriage and divorce, but marriage. And specifically though, his, his model is very focused on communication within marital relationships. So Gottman is basically observing how people talk to each other in an intimate relationship, in a marital relationship. And that's what his research is based on. In their, the way they describe criticism in, in the Gottman model is that criticism is, in essence, going after someone's character. For example, in a relationship, if one person feels, I don't know, the other person's not doing their share of the chores, a criticism statement would be, 
you're so lazy. What do you do all day? You don't get anything done. You never have. So that's criticism. It doesn't actually address the, the specific issue of the dishes are not done. Okay. It doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end of that. And again, the focus isn't even on the undone dishes. It's about assailing the other person. And let's face it, criticism is pretty much the core of almost every narcissistic relationship. They'll say things like, you never cared about me instead of, I had hoped you would call more often. Criticism is a chronic, chronic refrain of the narcissistic relationship. And once you hear it for long enough, what ends up happening is a person always being criticized is at some point you start believing it. Defensiveness, Horseman 2, is actually often a cycle that plays out for both people in a narcissistic relationship, mostly because there is so much criticism. So in Gottman's model, criticism sets off defensiveness. When we feel attacked, we want to defend ourselves. It's an almost reflexive reaction, which is why it's so hard in narcissistic relationships, right? I tell you don't defend, you're like, they're criticizing me, I want to defend. But with narcissists, defensiveness always makes things worse. Narcissists do this all the time, and it can often take the form of gaslighting. I never said that. I never did that. That didn't happen. Or sometimes they try word salad. I am tired of being told I don't care. I work hard. I make money. I plan vacations. I have stopped playing tennis as much and I love tennis and now I'm not playing tennis. It's like nobody in the family cares about my health. I was doing one thing for my health. I was playing th tennis and then, and then if I play tennis, there's not going to be any money. And you're like, what just happened? Right? Meanwhile, that entire word salad mess may have simply been launched by you asking them why they didn't pick up the milk and cat food on the way home because you needed it for that night. Narcissistic relationships are basically just defensive dances. You trying to, usually failing, but you defending yourself from accusations that often don't make sense or just never end or criticisms that seem unrelenting. And them, the narcissist, constantly defending themselves to protect their fragility. Then, there is horseman number three, contempt. Contempt, very simply, is just being mean, but not just regular mean, dismissively, sneeringly mean. A person who shows contempt is almost disgusted by someone. Anyone in a narcissistic relationship has pretty much just experienced a masterclass on contempt. Narcissists get bored with people pretty easily. Narcissists are also often quite snobby. They can be dismissive and invalidating. And all of these things present as contempt. They may have contempt for your friends or your family. They may have contempt for the way you cook. They may have contempt for how you sneeze. Nothing is off limits. Contempt is about a sense of superiority that somehow one person is doing more, is worth more, deserves more, and is somehow better than the other person. And needless to say, in the case of the narcissist, it's always that they think they deserve more. Contempt is also, though, a troubling two-way street in a narcissistic relationship. And it makes sense why this is the case. The narcissist often tends to be contemptuous of lots of people, including of their own partner. But since contempt can arise from the negative feelings that you have about a partner, you yourself, if you're in a narcissistic relationship, may find yourself developing contempt and then you start feeling like you're the one who's narcissistic because you're having such negative, contemptuous feelings. Interestingly, Gottman found that contempt was the most consistent predictor 
of divorce. Then there is the next horseman, which is good old stonewalling. Stonewalling is a narcissist go-to. Stonewalling can be things like, I refuse to talk about that, storming out of or leaving the room while you're speaking directly to them, the silent treatment, looking at their phone when you are talking, all of those are forms of stonewalling. Again, Gottman's assertion is that we are all guilty of doing these things at times. You yourself may have stonewalled too. I know I've stonewalled, like I mean, I'm copping to it. Like we've probably all done it. And his argument actually about stonewalling is that when we are physiologically flooded, we don't respond and we shut down. And that's what he's giving as the reasoning behind stonewalling. Now, the nice thing is that Gottman's model doesn't just leave us hanging. His institute actually suggests antidotes to these patterns. But many of the things that he suggests as the antidotes do not work in a narcissistic relationship. They suggest that the antidote to criticism, for example, is to talk about your feelings with sentences that start with I and ex to express a need positively. Sadly, I know this is something that many people were told when they went to couples therapy with a narcissistic partner. I tell people this, that you've got to take accountability, that you have to put feelings in terms of I. And when they used that technique with the narcissist, they were only met with contempt when they tried this. Can you imagine saying to a narcissist, I feel a little anxious and I just want to talk to you about my day. An antidote that they suggest to contempt is to, to build a culture of appreciation and reminding yourself of your partner's positive attributes. The difficult thing is that to do this, to create that culture of cooperation and ultra appreciating your partner when they're narcissistic is that it can often run the risk of justification, of maintaining cognitive dissonance and strengthening the trauma bond. Again, this is guidance that many people in narcissistic relationships are given in couples therapy. Build gratitude for your partner. I have no doubt it works well when there are two non-antagonistic people in a relationship. And many times we get sloppy when we're in our relationships and we don't express enough gratitude. The idea of one person only expressing the gratitude, you, to the narcissist, over time isn't gonna work. As an antidote to defensiveness, they suggest taking responsibility, which in their language means accepting your partner's point of view and apologizing for your wrongdoing. Once again, you can see how this antidote gets tricky because if the narcissist's point of view is deeply skewed or self-serving, which tends to happen quite a bit in narcissistic relationships, what are you doing then when you accept their point of view again, in essence, kind of sign off on gaslighting at times, and concerns, and this sort of raises again, to me, concerns about cognitive dissonance. Now, I am always going to be the first to say, take responsibility and own your behavior. No one is always going to get it right in a relationship. Just own it. But that technique only works if both parties in a relationship are doing it. Now, as the antidote to stonewalling, the, the, the people in this model, they suggest self-soothing, like taking a break. Now, the taking a break the, the, the sort of getting, getting yourself out of that situation. The issue is that that's meant for the stonewaller, not for the stonewall E. Now, perhaps the narcissist will do this. And if your temptation is to march off, then there is some utility in this, right? But if the narcissist is the one who keeps stonewalling, they are unlikely to hear you when you point this pattern out to them. Now, I am actually, again, I am an admirer of the body of research 
that Gottman has produced and how it's gotten translated into clinical intervention. But, this is a big but, in the skewed and contorted world of narcissistic relationships, this guidance not only would leave many people in narcissistic relationships with no meaningful results or recourse or safety, it could actually make the abuse worse. The narcissist saying, hey, you don't express yourself positively enough. Isn't that what we just learned in therapy? Or you don't appreciate me enough. That's what we were told. Or you need to apologize to me. And the fact is that, and I read their materials carefully, at Gottman's Institute, they are definitely willing to recognize that some relationships are too toxic to save. And they do cite narcissistic personality disorder as one of the factors in that. But the challenge remains that because many, many therapists may not detect narcissism or narcissistic personality styles and patterns, they may just happily be suggesting antidotes and gratitude when the utility of that ship has left the harbor. Given that the majority of narcissistic relationships are characterized by the, these patterns, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling, and sometimes these patterns are observed by both par partners, and the antidotes being suggested for each of these patterns pretty much not working, then the unfortunate conclusion is that these relationships just really don't work, at least not in a healthy way. And it's tough to be a couples therapist, especially if you're using this model to be able to say, yeah, we're not going to be able to fix the car. We're not going to be able to fix the marriage. And this breakdown may explain some of the frustrations you experienced in couples therapy. Because many models of couples therapy do not make sufficient allowances for unhealthy patterns like narcissism. And so when I read these materials, I was like, this is interesting. I've always known about the four horsemen model. And so when I notice contempt in marital relationships, you know, I'm like, yikes. But because so often the contempt, because of the nature of the work I do, the contempt in a marital relationship that there's really no way of creating sort of a culture of appreciation or any of these other tools, you really do realize that it's kind of, it's not going to work. And sometimes clients will say that we've gone, gone to couples therapy and it actually did make things far, far worse in the relationship because the non-narcissistic partner was being told you need to try, you need to try to take their point of view, you need to express more gratitude. So do a deep dive on your relationship and go ahead and reflect how many of the four horsemen do you have in your relationship? And although Gottman's research is focused on marriage, I do think that these constructs, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and, and stonewalling, these are unhealthy elements of any relationship. And you may say, it's interesting. I have a friend who's narcissistic. I have a boss who's narcissistic. I have a parent or a sibling who's narcissistic. And it's exactly the same kind of things that are happening these patterns are manifesting in those relationships. So the very thing, the very thing that pretty much speaks to what is likely the end of a relationship are some of the core characteristics of a narcissistic relationship. Now that's something to chew on. Thanks again for tuning in.